Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And my God, it's November. It is November. How is it November? Well, wait a minute. It's not only November, but this is our anniversary month. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. That's Not right. when we started the podcast. No, not when we started. When I asked you if you would maybe possibly kind of consider doing a <laughs> podcast is November. While, while I politely waited for you to finish the sentence, because I was like, is it rude to say, can I do this podcast with you? <laughs> yep. That was Yay! November. You- I- a year we, ago. When we podcast proposed. Yes, absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. But it only took us, what, like six months to actually get started? Well, we talked about getting started for quite a long in time. In January. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, yes. st- we started the idea in November. We were going to launch in January, and I think we launched in June. So, <laughs> Yeah, just, just within spitting distance. <laughs> we wanted to get it right. So yeah. anyway, well, there you go. Okay, so let's, let's get started in this, our anniversary month, uh, by thanking our patrons. Yay. Um, Tom Loveland at Mind Over Machines, Cat's Copy. The architecture firm of GWWO, Herbert and Ethel Inc., and Mary Craft Staffing and HR Solutions. Thank you. So I'm going to insist that I hope you have a story because I feel like I've been telling all the stories. I do. I like, Yay! I do have a story, and and I'm going to tell it. You're going to tell. <laughs> well, that'll work out nicely. Because otherwise, this is going to get really awkward this is really fast. Like 28. I have a story, but you can't hear it. 28 minutes of dead air. Right, um, well, let's get yes. started. So here's my story. I was working with with a client and I have this great working relationship with her. We get along well. I've become a resource for her in her business. And the thing that I like best about what I do is that I get to the place with certain clients where I'm not just the legal resource if they have a contract question or whatever. Right. You know, they'll they'll ask me and even if I don't know if I'm not the right person or I don't know, they depend on me to find the right answer. Anyway, so I was having this conversation with her because she's she had embarked on this very large project and it happened to be a project that I know something about uh, beyond the legal. I just have a lot of experience in it. So like like an area of expertise of in business. Yes. We, okay. And I had given her not just a recommendation, but I had really come down strongly on this. I think this is the direction you have to go because the other path she was considering, at least in my experience, I saw was just not a a good place. It was fraught with, with dangers, but it was ultimately, of course, her call and her money. It's her business, all of that. And I I knew that, but (laughs) when a couple days went by and she let me know, she made her decision and I had strongly advocated left and she told me that she had decided that she was going to go right. Mm. Now, I know my job. My job at that point, having given my very best recommendation, was to fully support her and do everything I possibly could to make her project a success. Mm -hmm. That's my job. The reality was I was so angry Oh, I yeah. was so, and and I knew it then, and I will tell you now, I was irrationally <laughs> right, so. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was so angry, and the thoughts going through my mind was, wait a minute, what the hell is she calling me for then? She considers me a resource that I couldn't move forward without you, I couldn't do anything without you, I told her what to do, and then she went the other way, and so what am which, I wasting which, my time for? Which I have to point out, because, you know, not everyone who's listening knows you like you're one thing I know about you that I think is important to this, especially with where I want to take it is you're not one to it's it's not like you're like my way or the highway kind of person. Like no. You're going to make that kind of stand. It's because you felt incredible. Like you really pick your battles on things that you would make that much of a stand on. Because when I've tried to get advice out of you, you often just ask me more questions and say, well, you're going to have to pick like you're not someone who says, 
you know, every time is like, here's what you should do in my, in this way, in my way or the highway. So right. this is a, this is a, this is a very particular kind of circumstance. Yeah. It was very unusual for me. Even the feeling was unusual for me because you're right. I'm much more collaborative. Yeah. Um, but this, I, and, and it came from, I, I'd like to say this in my defense. It, <laughs> it, it came from a good place because I was genuinely, genuinely worried about the path that she chose. Oh. That 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 is actually what I wanted to get to. Like this wasn't just a um, this was not anger because you like to be right. This was I know I feel like I know something. It's like you're watching someone else drive off a cliff or something. You're like, but 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 uh, yes, <laughs> yes. But you know, um, so I was genuinely worried about the path that she chose. But truth to tell, I know that part of the anger. Just thinking about it, I know that part of the anger was also had to be ego. Yeah. How, how, this is going to sound horrible, but how dare she? Well, ego often sounds horrible. So it I'm, I'm glad you're it, just like not sugarcoating it. Does. It does. <laughs> and so in even talking about this, it makes me feel horrible. Like I shouldn't be feeling this way, but I will tell you, it was such a strong and such a genuine emotion that I thought she had called into question my value in what I do, uh, my expertise, yeah. why, you know, maybe, maybe I should just part company with her. We had a great relationship, by the way, we still do, but yeah. um, we had a great relationship. I really enjoyed working with her. Every She's exactly the kind of client that I built my business to serve. And yet at this place, I was thinking, you know what? Maybe we just part company. Maybe it's not the right relationship. I've done everything I can for her. Maybe she should just go and she should find somebody else that right. just whatever. And, so so yeah. here's like, the, I'm so happy you brought up this story um, because this is a topic that I'm, that I really love. So here's, here's what's interesting about it. I'm often listening to people's sort of irrational emotional reaction stories. Mm -hmm. Like, and they know it. They're like, okay, this happened and I'm feeling this way and I know it's irrational, but you, but it's, you can't ignore it it's just because you. you know, it's irrational. Yes. You still have to deal with it. But what's interesting is that the, the funny thing is when you're listening to someone else's irrational emotional story, you know, much like we've said before, it's like watching someone else parallel park a car. Theirs always seems silly. You're like, well, that's like, that's dumb. Why don't you just, why would you react like Why that? don't you just do this? Like, right. So, so if you're listening to Elliot's story and you're thinking, well, that's silly, Elliot, like just feel this way. Um, I guarantee you, you have, you have your own stories, I'm sure. But that is, that's what's important about it. I think is that there is something that happens and I'm, I'm really happy that you shared the story because I appreciate that you did because it can be kind of vulnerable to share your irrational Irrational emotional stories. Yeah, I hate how it sounds. By exactly. The way. You hate how it sounds. Everyone's sound that way. And but I think it's this really overlooked part of business that that this comes into this like business is personal, you know, it's always personal. There is there are so many things that get hung up and so many decisions made because of these like what feel like irrational emotional reactions. But there's something I've in me, I've always wanted to kind of normalize that as like, yes, maybe they're irrational, but they are every bit as much real. Like you get to have the yeah. emotions you're having and by trying to shove them over to the side and pretend they're not real and put blinders on and be like, well, that's silly. I shouldn't feel that way. So I'm just going to ignore it. That's where I think the, the danger is versus owning it and saying like, yep, I am having the reaction of a five-year-old. Now let me <laughs> process it and like think it through and what do I need to do? And and here's the thing. I, in that moment, and I say moment, but it stretched into days. Hmm. I didn't see a way that I even had the, the option of ignoring it because I would be in my car or I would be working on something else or I would be walking the dog and it would seep into my consciousness because mm -hmm. It was so consuming were, for me. Were you walking around talking to her and writing letters like in your head? Were you composing paragraphs, oh, and thoughts, I, and sentences? Were you having conversations? I won't say letters, but I I can't tell you the number of arguments that I was, by the way, incredibly eloquent in. And I won every <laughs> single one to the extent that my client was dumbfounded at my brilliance. Of course. Of course. Um, of course, those were when I was alone in my car or just walking right. the dog. But that was also the thing that while I was processing it, because I started to ask, okay, well, let's say that you had this brilliant argument and you you just showed her the light. What do you want her to say to you? Right. Well, my question in that is like, what does winning, you're making does, air quotes, yes. what does winning that argument 
get you? And is that thing what you want? And this is what really bothered me. Well, one of the things that really bothered me, I didn't have an answer to that question. Hmm. What does winning look like? Because did winning look like, um, you know, I get a phone call from her and she goes, you know what, Elliot, I was so wrong. You are incredibly, I'm going to do exactly what you said. Because that's not winning. Because I, I thought if that phone call were ever made, odds are she might have made it because she okay. felt that I had, I was angry with her and she, or right. I had badgered her into it. And, right. and that's not that what my role good. is. And yeah. that's not who I am and what our relationship was. So I, I take, I, I take issue with the question. I, I, I think that in as long as these emotional reaction instigating moments feel like winning and losing, I think that th there's no place to go that gets you what you actually want. So I would there's ask no place to go. Yeah. There's no place to go that looks like winning. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, so I'm curious if you could, you answer, would you have had more of an answer and maybe not? And that's okay. If the question had been like, what do you actually want? Like, the, like what's important to you? What, what matters? In well, this? see for me, the answer, the answer is no, and I'll tell you why, although I can see why the question, why altering that question is valuable. Because for me, I saw several different options, and I didn't like any of those roads. And the problem was I didn't see the actual road that I should have gone down. The options that I saw were, hey, well, the project goes forward, and ultimately, I'm proven right. There's a disaster <laughs> on the path that she chose and oh she gosh. thinks and the world knows I, I should have right. listened to Elliot. <laughs> well, that's I a, that's, love how, how honest you're being. It's yeah. Because like, so, we all do that. You're like, it crashes and burns and they're like, Jody was the, right. Their dying <laughs> thought is I should have listened to Elliot. If only I had listened to Elliot. Elliot. Um, but then, of course, I knew... Well, that's not what I want to happen. No, I, I, no, you have no joy in no, that. No joy. No and I, joy. I, she's a great person, great client. I love her business. The last thing I want is a disaster to befall it. Okay, but, but so fascinating that your the other option you saw was like, well, we just stop working together. Like, but but it's not fascinating. Right. It's that's what there is, and I I think we've touched on some of this before. But there's a lot of neuroscience that's going on. There's a lot of stuff happening in your brain that I won't say makes it. Um, impossible for you to think otherwise. But I think it's really, really important to know that the, um, you know, when your value feels threatened, uh, all that blood gets sucked out of the smart prefrontal cortex part of your brain, the part that can be nuanced in its thinking and all that kind of stuff. And it, it goes to your like lizard brain, fight or flight kind of thing. And what's important about that is that it, it makes it, I won't say impossible, but it makes it very hard for for us to see the grayscale in the middle, it makes like the thing I watch out for in my own mind. And certainly I'm listening for my clients is when things start to feel very binary. It's this like all or nothing. Like, like it looks like all the way over here. Well, we just, we just stop, you know, we stop working together altogether, or it's all the way over at this other fantasy thing. And it's when it's hard to see all the options in between is, is often at least in part, that thing going on in your brain. Yeah. And you said, you know, when your value gets threatened. So actually, I didn't see it as binary. I would binary. say feels threatened. That's well, the feels, interesting part, right? Okay, like. feels threatened. <laughs> but I didn't see it as binary. I saw it, and here's something that's not a word, as trinary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because okay. I had my options that I saw, which of course were only a fraction of the actual options. You know, one is, hey, the Elliot was right as her dying breath thing that we discussed. Mm -hmm. One is, well, I'm not going to work with her anymore. Mm -hmm. And then the third possibility that I saw was everything works out fabulously. And the whole time it's marching from one perfect milestone to the next perfect milestone. She's saying to herself, because I could envision that she would be <laughs> saying, Elliot was wrong. Elliot was wrong. <laughs> Elliot was wrong. Clearly, he's not like... He's yeah. not clearly. He has no idea what he's talking about. And so, that was also a path that frightened right. me, no matter how unrealistic. So, I saw those three choices. Well, they're all three protective choices. Right. And I, I obviously, didn't like any of them. Sure. And I thought, well, then there's no way out. Right. Right. No, our brains are amazing at generating unsatisfying solutions and not being able to see the ones in between. 
So, so I'm curious. So you stewed on it for a few days. I stewed I on it a lot. Yeah, yes. lots of stewing in the crock pot for. <laughs> Yes. And it's funny that I, I have such a love hate relationship with the stewing period. Like I think for some of us, some of the time, and it just, I think it depends. That is how we process and get through it and, you know, figure out what we are going to do. It can though become kind of a pathology of, you know, where I think it, where I think it can be a real time suck if you don't endeavor to get you know, more developed in handling your emotional reactions is, you know, when you're spending hours and hours writing this like crazy long email, you know, where you're the trying Unabomber to- The Unabomber Manifesto. Yeah, the Unabomber Manifesto that you're really going to get them when when you haven't paused to say like, what do you want? But but I'm sort of going down a couple of rabbit holes there. How did you work through it? Like what- Well, I'll tell you that- Tell a little the, more of the story. Like, I'll tell you the, the good and the bad. Okay, so- Assuming you're not just still walking around no, seething no, no. about it. No, I'm not still walking around. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out really well. But here is the process. And the the next thing that I'll tell you sounds painful, but I think it actually was was helpful to get to the resolution. So my client, who obviously is much more emotionally mature than I am, <laughs> um, she she texted me and she said, "I really think we ought to have a conversation because I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned about that. You know, I I." Um, went against this recommendation that you feel strongly and I'm concerned about the strain on our relationship, et cetera. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, which was an eminently reasonable text to send. And she sent it immediately after, maybe mm -hmm. when I say immediately, within hours after um, she had advised this decision. So it was enough time for the anger to well up, but certainly not enough time for me to process. Where sure. to go. So I texted back and I said, in a nutshell, I don't believe that a conversation would be productive <gasps> at this point. Really? Yes. I said, that, sh that surprises I me. I don't from believe you. that a conversation would be productive. And then wow. I had a paragraph in text about how I feel so strongly. And it comes from a place where it's my concern about you, but you've made the decision. It's your call. Because I interpreted her text as saying, because there were some other parts of it, that she just wanted to explain it to me. And so my reaction was oh. that I didn't think that a debate was productive. Oh, you thought it was for debate, for I, a decision that she'd already made versus like, let's talk this through because I'm concerned about our correct. working relationship. Oh, that's so interesting. Correct. So I didn't think a debate was productive because it didn't matter what I thought. First, from the wounded place, I would think it doesn't matter what I think. You already <laughs> made your decision. But from, kind of like when my daughter says, should I get the blue one or the green one? And I say the green one. And she says, OK, great. I'm getting the blue one. I'm like, why did you ask? Me. Right, right. So, so that, so it doesn't matter what I think from the wounded place. Obviously, it doesn't matter. Um, and then from the from the logical place, it doesn't matter what I think because it's her call. She made the decision, and then we got it. Realistically, we'd have to find a way to move on. So I I said, um, yeah, the conversation wouldn't be productive. And then I said, we'll we'll take it up at another time. I just closed with one of these um, just throwaway lines. Talk to you later. You know, something like that. <laughs> Um, well, a couple of days went by and I actually had to go out of town. So I went out of town, came back and she called. And so she said, okay, can we talk about this now? And I said, yes, because I had taken that time I was stewing over it, but I realized that it wasn't a win loss thing. I, mm -hmm. I can't aim a conversation to win because there wasn't that dynamic. And number two, I didn't want to lose the relationship. You know, I was right. wounded, but I didn't want to choose that path. Right. So I had to go into the conversation, and this is very unusual, not only for me personally, but also from my training, you know, right. as an attorney. I had to go into a conversation that was um, significant, where I not only didn't I know what the outcome would be, I didn't even know what I what my goal was. Yeah. And that was and that felt difficult. Uncomfortable? It felt incredibly uncomfortable because it was. Because um, you couldn't have it all planned out. No, it was like the, and we've talked about this, you know, yeah. the, the, the end scene of the, or one of the end scenes in Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail. You yeah. know, you have this path, you have to walk it and you just have to have faith that there's going to be something solid under your feet. I, I'd like to see the path. I like to see where I'm going. I like to see the destination. So we had this discussion and she said, I really need you going forward, but I'm really afraid that if something goes wrong, which is the time I have to turn to you, 
that you're going to be thinking, I told you so. Mm. And that's not what I would be thinking. And so I said, well, let me ask you this question. What if the, the project went perfectly and we're standing there together at the grand opening? Would you turn to me and say, see, I told you I was right. And she said, no, I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. And I said, so, she so, goes, so oh, I'm getting oddly okay. emotional listening to this story, bec- but but it, but it's not odd because like Jody's sniffing. Um, I c- can you feel that? I mean, like that that the way that part of the story feels, I could even hear it in your voice. That is what truth feels like. Yeah, everything else is noise. It's the she was imagining you your, ver- your the version where she you're saying I told you so. You're imagining it's. That's what fears sound like. They sound like noise. They sound like things that make that part of your brain go off and go, wah, 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 danger, danger, Will Robinson. But when you get to the truth, I, I think we've talked before about Susan Campbell's work around communication where, but even if we have repeated it, I'm going to repeat it because it's so powerful is the, you know, she says that, it, you know, most of communication and is trying to get somebody to react a certain way or not react a certain way. And that when you're doing that, that's not communication, that's control. And you're trying to manipulate Mm -hmm. the conversation in a particular way. You're planning out this path of a conversation so that the person will do this thing or not do this thing. She said, that's not communication that, that what she, her whole platform is, is about relating about just talking about what's real saying, like sharing your perspective. And in that case, you know, she shares her perspective. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I would never do that. And, you know, you actually shared the thing that you had been afraid that she would do. And she's like, oh, my God, I would never do that. And the truth of it is, is that to both of you, the relationship is more important. And if you that's when I was saying, as long as the conversation is in like a who's winning it's the whole wrong question because there's a third entity in all of this, which is your relationship. And what right. the relationship needs is, is X, Y, Z. And it's like, if the focus is on that person versus like round one, Elliot versus his client, um, it's like, what does the relationship need most? It's to clear the air about how do we move forward with this without either one of us feeling like we're in an I told you so position. Like what is a healthy next step forward look like yeah and and the the thing that's amazing and it never ceases to amaze me even though i've experienced it you know having lived on the planet for quite a few decades i've experienced it a lot and that is how long you can stew over fear and how quickly it can dissipate with the right conversation and so as you know it took about maybe four minutes for what was bothering me for days to just completely dissipate. And I, I said to her what I had said earlier in, in this discussion. I said, look, well, or her first thing is said, you know, I lead by consensus. I like to have consensus. And I said to her, you don't have consensus here. Mm-hmm. We disagree. Yep. Okay, you know that. But you made the call. Now, moving from this point, my job, my mission is to make the call that you made incredibly successful to do everything I can to support the decision you made. It's your right to make it. You're the leader. It's your call. You've made it. So everything I do from this point out is designed to, to make that the right call. So, so here's a question because you're, you're, you couldn't be more, more right about something that is for some reason impossible to remember is that on, on this side of one of those conversations, uh, you are just drowning in, in fear and anxiety and what ifs, and it could look this way and worst case scenarios and whatever. And in what can feel like the blink of an eye, it can be completely dissolved just like that. So what, what made it possible for that? And, And I'm asking in a very specific way, like, what were the conditions? What were the, the moments? Like what made that shift possible? And I'm asking because I'm curious, like from the context of how, how can people make that possible? How can you create the space that allows that to be possible? What do you think contributed to it or started it? Okay. I'll put it in, in kind of legal terms, um, (laughs) believe it or not in, in 
law, a contract is made by offer and acceptance. But in, in this situation, that's the way I think of it. There's, first of all, you have to have a consensus or an understanding of what's important. You identify the relationship is more important than my victory, her victory, or, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So we agree on that, even though we hadn't said it. But somebody has to have the, the EQ, the emotional intelligence, however you say it, to not only identify the priority, but to offer an honest conversation. Yeah. Somebody and, has to go first. And she did. Yeah. To her immense, incredible credit. And now I wish, by the way, that I could tell this story where I was the one <laughs> that made the call. No, I actually don't because I, I think the, the the I love that we're getting to focus on it because I think because most of us most often find ourselves on your side. It's a much more real and honest story. And therefore, of course, I'm a much bigger fan. So. Well, that's our tagline, <laughs> right? It's, it has to be real, honest. Right. Business. I mean, if this, if this is a show of like, look how brilliant Elliot <laughs> is. It, it, I don't think it'd be terribly interesting. Right. That's coming to iTunes next. But um, <laughs> but no. So I wish I could say that I, I made the call, but she did. She, she made the call. It was her offer. Let's have a, a real conversation about this and and, and, and i'm is afraid that all it took the, like the minute she said that you, like all your defenses went down no but but it did take and this is where i will take some of the credit it's not just an offer but it has to be an acceptance on the other side i mm. had to realize as i did but wait a minute this is not only an opportunity but this is a place where i have to walk out onto that invisible path i have to be honest and say all right, well, this is what I'm really afraid of. And that's a hard place to be. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's probably hardest to go first. And then it's, but it's also just as hard because you could have reacted and said, well, you know, well, if you would have, you know, well, you know, like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I told you so. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was, um, I was looking quickly here to see if I could find it. I, something came up in my Facebook memories recently. Um, it's a wonderful article about empathy in relationships. And it's just, it articulates something very, uh, very poignant in this, I think. And I'll, I'll try to find it. It was saying, um, it says it better than this, that empathy is um, like somebody has to go first, that it's this really, that you can't have, like empathy doesn't show up at the same time. Oh, I'll have to find it because it's, it's so much better than I'm saying it right now. But um, that how scary it is to be like that somebody has to to tiptoe out onto these the outer edges of what feels really scary to create the space where real, honest, truthful conversations can happen. And, and the thing is, it's like, like, I know it's scary. I know it's hard. But the thing I see over and over again is it, like, if you, like, it gets so much easier out there. It, it, it reminds me, and I think we've talked about this in a different context. I've used this metaphor, but you know, I'm five, three and a half. So when, I don't know if this happens for taller people or shorter people, but when, when I'm like walking out into the ocean, the place where the waves are crashing and breaking the hardest is, is usually at the height for me where it's like right around my torso. Like I can't stand there for very long or I will get toppled over very easily. So I need to either like push through out into like the big giant waves that I can like jump in, in a floaty way, or I have to back up where they're down, like around my knees. And to me, th these kinds of conversations feel a little bit like that, you know, like pushing through that hard bit, but then out there, even if it doesn't go the way you're hoping for, even if it doesn't like come with, with like magic unicorn pixie dust of like, oh, we both got everything we wanted. It's still way easier than the defended, right. protected, fear-based. Yeah. No, that's, that's true. It's much easier because you can start to, to ride the current because yes, when... That's a great um, way to say it. Because where I was... If, if we stayed there, and by the way, no relationship, I think, no meaningful relationship can stay there. No relationship I'd want no. can stay there. No. But if Not you sustainably. Sus right. But if you, if you suspend that disbelief for a second, if I did stay there with her in that moment in time feeling that way, we would constantly be battered by waves. On her side, yep. she would be battered by, well, 
what if something goes wrong? I can't really tell him. And what, what happens here? And, and is it going to be, I told you so. And, and he's always going to be doubting my, my decision. And maybe and, I shouldn't and, have and done just this. Imagine how many more problems those fear-based worries yeah. would then create in the relationship. It, it becomes exponential. It's, oh, it's, it's horrible it because rots well, and it fetters. And right. Cause on my side, I'd be saying, well, I can see this being a problem, but you know, she didn't listen to me before. So I'm, you know, I'm not so, going to raise this. And, and frankly, if I raised it, she would just think it's sour grapes because I, she didn't go yes, the way that I be wanted to. Back. So yes. I wouldn't be giving, I wouldn't, there was no way in that place being battered by those waves that I could do my best work. Yes. And, Ugh. um, so we had to move. Yep. And I only saw unproductive paths to move because I didn't, I couldn't see the way forward. And I'm, I'm so incredibly thankful that she saw the way forward first. And I was at least intelligent enough Mm -hmm. to follow her lead. Right. So the answer I am not looking for is, is why yes, from now on, I will always be this person. But do you see something like, like if this all happened over again, or the next time something like this kind of comes, kind of like this happens, like, is there something that you would imagine? And maybe the answer is so obvious. It's, it's a dumb question. I don't know. But like, do you think this experience would change you possibly being the first person to traipse out there? Because I know coming into conversations like that for a lawyer is particularly. It, it may. I, I can't tell you honestly, that I wouldn't go through the whatever, they're not five stages of grief, but right. wouldn't go through that anger and denial. And let's, let's burn the house. Let's just forget the relationship and all that stuff. Because I believe that I would probably feel that. The, here's the value, I think. Um, I would be able to self-diagnose better, mm-hmm. um, recognize like I'm doing that, I'm that thing in this like- state. You yeah. know, which is part of mindfulness. You yeah. know, it's it's not look at eliminating me, I'm doing human that thing. emotion, but it's <laughs> yes, it's look at me. I'm doing that thing. This is how I feel when I'm doing that thing. Yeah. Um, and now every every relationship is different. Every every situation may be different, but it is comforting to say you remember how wound up you were before, and this is what worked. Yeah. So perhaps there's a path that you're not seeing. It's the maybe part, you know, and there's one part in the story where I think it's possible you might've had a different reaction and it's actually, I'll edit that a little bit. I don't even mean different reaction. I think you might've had a different interpretation of the volley that was sent your way, which is the text message requesting mm-hmm. the conversation because it's fascinating. I I didn't, I was I was like jaw droppingly shocked that you said no to that conversation. And it's so much so that I couldn't even figure out why I was, I was making my huh face. And, but then the minute you said it, I was like, Oh, it makes perfect sense. If that's how you read it, if you read it is like, well, let's, let's argue the yes and no's of this decision. Yeah. But I didn't even, cause all I heard was her saying, I care about this relationship. Can we talk about this? It bothers me that we have this angst between us. But, but what, and again, not putting this out as like, I was right. And you were, but the fact is like, you couldn't even hear that possibility, right? Well, there were, there were two things. One's negative, one's positive on my side. The negative side is yes, I couldn't hear that possibility. But the positive side is that I knew enough at how wound up I was then that I didn't think that if I picked up the phone, I would give, even had I recognized it, I don't think at that point I would have given that conversation its best chance to succeed. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair um, enough. And so I think the time was, was useful. Which I will, which I will just add another thought in there. I was talking about the biology of like your, it's actually your, what is it? Vague, vague, it's V-A-G-A. S or L, there's a nerve that like goes down your throat. There's like a thing that's happening where you're having this fight or flight response. And until that can calm down, it really isn't best to try and be having these conversations. So I think there's a, there's another piece to that, like recognizing that you're doing that thing, that you're in that state. It's perfectly acceptable if somebody tries to talk to you in that point, you can say like, hey, I just, I'm not quite ready. You know, it doesn't mean I would hate for this to sound like my thoughts on this are like, jump into the conversation when you're still like, if you're still all wired up, you can say, you know what, I just need to process this a little bit more and then take responsibility for coming back to it. But I'm so happy we got to talk about this. This happens. This is a large number of, um, of my on call last minute, like, Hey, do you have 10 minutes to talk through something? It's because 
you know, as a leader, you get triggered. And I think some people don't realize how emotional um, it can be, especially for the leaders I work with who've done a really good job at creating a culture where people will share their irritations and discontent and criticisms with them, which which I highly recommend. But it can be hard, you know, and it's it's tough to hear that they want to hear those things. But ouch, they have to process it. Yeah. And and because that's what I always tell people, and this is what I feel so deeply, it sounds trite, but it's not just business. It's personal. Always. So that's our story. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so grateful for everyone who's listening in and we're extra especially grateful to all of our patrons who've joined us over at patreon.com to support our efforts here. And um, we hope to see you next week. And listen, having told our story, We'd love to hear yours. Ooh, yeah. So I guess what we're trying to say is, the floor is yours. Go to SoHere'sMyStory.com and join the conversation. Wait, before you go, there are three things that we really want you to know. First, you can find show notes and links to all of the random things we happen to mention during the episode by visiting our website, SoHere'sMyStory.com. The second thing is, we like to talk. And not just to each other. That's right. So what we really want to hear is your story. So while you're there, you'll also find links to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and other ways to contact us with questions, suggestions, or even to share your own story. And if you love the show and want to support future episodes, you'll also find the link to our Patreon page where we share our extra bonus content. Or if you can't support us financially, it'd be great if you could leave us a five-star review at iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever podcast service you use to listen to us. And be sure to tell all your friends. Until next time. 